Ty, good morning, and I hope you avoided the coyotes on the way in this morning. <laughs> good morning. Yeah, <laughs> hey, I got driven today, so I oh. feel pretty good. Yeah, oh. I, I mean, I didn't want to fight the traffic. You I know see. What I mean? yeah. uh, some, what, what, what do we have? Some sort of a black suburban or something like that? What, <laughs> uh, those, what, who, yeah, who? yeah, just a uh, just little car service. You know, okay, all right. Yeah. Ten. All right, all right, all right. Big yeah. bucks. <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. No, do, doze off a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Worry that's about nice. It. Early in the morning. Uh, <laughs> did, uh, did Ken Laird take care of that? or huh? uh, was You know what? I should give a... Yeah, yeah. something to can, you know. Yeah, yeah keep your receipts, it. man. Yeah, yeah, expense that. Yeah, expense that. Right. Yeah. Expense that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Well, no, I got it, though. Y'all take care of me yeah. a little bit. I got it. Appreciate well, it. Well, we got a big event tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, 24 Lanes with Ty Law at Apex and Marlboro. Uh, I don't think th- – there may be a, maybe one bowling team left, uh, but other than that, no bowling. However, there are tickets for 30 bucks to go eat and hang out with you. And uh, Nikovich is coming. Rob Nikovich is coming. Nice. Wiggy, Courtney. Okay. Uh, Shime, are you making it tonight, or are you flexing your way out of this appearance this evening? No, my plan is to be there. Okay, all right. Okay. And, Cur- and Curtis yeah. is bringing baby Curtis. Yes, James baby Dubb. James. Yep. Baby James. And the diaper bag. Yep. You could actually probably sneak your own bowling balls in in the diaper bag, Curtis. I, I think we have everything I've ever owned in that bag. Okay. All right, well, uh, if you want to get tickets, you want to join Ty Law tonight and the rest of us, then go to the GregHillFoundation.org. So, um I don't know if it's nonsense or not, but we've been talking about Tom Brady and perhaps a return here uh, (laughs) to run it to run it back. (laughs) Um, Do you ever? (laughs) I got a laugh. Go ahead, go ahead, finish up, finish up. Do you you ever? Do you ever see that happening in your mind? Uh, The two of them, Bill and Tom, have been gushing about each other. So yesterday on this show, Mm -hmm. Bill spent you know a good three or four minutes talking about how. Marvelous Tom Brady is. And then last night on his podcast, Tom Brady uh, spent a good two, three minutes gushing about Bill and how he watches his team every week and what an incredible job that they are doing and that it starts at the top. So um, Curtis believes that that is a thawing of the any kind of relationship turmoil that there was, and that opens the door for Tom Brady to finish his career here. I wouldn't say that, but... When you talk about Bill and Tom Brady, what are they going to go out there and bash each other in the media? Of course, they're going to say good things, and I know they have a lot of love and respect for each other, but to get Tom to come back and, and play, I don't know about that one. Now, is it easy to open up the conversation because no one's playing great football at the quarterback position? You don't know whether who, who is going to be from week to week right now because of you know Bailey Zappi and Mac Jones, who's the quarterback. So it's easy to talk about that. But will we be having the same conversation if one of those guys were playing lights out? Will we have those no. conversations? Wiggy just said Hell that. Hell no, we no, wouldn't we have those conversations. Yeah. No. So, just, Wiggy you know, just said be, that. Because of the uncertainty of what's going on, who's to say if Tom is going to play? If he wants to play, would they welcome him back? Well, what we see out there right now, yeah, come on right. back. But at, at the same time, are you going to open up the checkbook you know, right. to go with it. So it's not just these guys loving each other up and opening up the door to come back. It's a it's business to go along with it as well. Do you think he's going to continue playing, though, Tom, at least? Now that it looks like the divorce is kind of fi- final and headed in that direction, do you feel like, all right, he's at least going to continue to play? Depending on where that is, we don't know, but he's still going to play. I can see him playing just because if this season doesn't, work out like he expects it to work out and that Tom being the ultimate competitor, if they just terrible, he might not want to go out like that. You know, I, that that's just Tom. Most of us will say, you know what, I don't have anything else to prove. Hey, I'm I'm done. He's always said he wanted to play till 45. What is he? 45. Yeah. That was always his plan. So I think he's done everything that he's wanted to do. He has more championships than any organization. So for him to come back, he would just probably have to stink it up this year and don't want to leave on those type of terms. But I really see a lot have, have, having to happen for Tom to come back and play another year. I just Which, don't see him playing there for another year, though. The team around him just is not doing him right. any service. He didn't want to be there anyway. Yeah, he, wanted he seems to be pissed. in Miami. Right. Like, nah, he wanted, yeah. to, he if, wanted to be in Miami. If that opportunity come up, I mean, who wouldn't want to go throw to Tyreek Hill and, mm-hmm. and, and Jalen Waddle? So I that's mean, a that's, better that's, opportunity. I mean, that is a better opportunity, but you're not going to get Tom just to go anywhere just mm-hmm. to play football. It has to be the right situation. Uh, he has to have the right offensive line. He has to have the right weapons right. because then he will be 46 years old. I know he's beating father time, mm-hmm. you know, more than most of us ever have and mm-hmm. anybody ever has. Mm-hmm. But 
it's going to be the right situation. He's not going to come back for a New England swan song right. with nobody to throw the damn ball to. So you can cancel Christmas with that one. Well, see, my, my three tie are Miami and San Francisco because right. I think San Francisco, obviously, they have the weapons, they have the defense, and they, they, they've kind of always – flirted with needing a quarterback and it seems like you know who the hell knows what Trey Lance is going to be now that he's hurt and then the other one that I'm kind of like you know hitching a little bit to is Tennessee because I know he flirted with Tennessee a little bit they the have Vrabel Der- connection yeah. the Vrabel connection they have Derrick Henry well what about the McDaniels connection Oof. <sighs> that might be too far gone though like they might just be. Uh, I mean they have some weapons there. I think the yeah. ties it's more about the and I agree with Ty it's more about all right, him going into a situation like, like guaranteed, that like he, has, he did with Tampa, that, that he's that he has that he has right. a legit chance to get back right. to the Super Bowl. Well, One thing we know legit. about uh, Las Vegas is you have Josh McDaniels, his comfort uh, with Josh, you know their history together. You have uh, Devontae Adams, right. which he, you know, outside of Randy Moss, you never had nobody to throw the ball uh, like that to. Mm-hmm. But can he be protected? Do they have the defense, uh, you know, to take some of the pressure off? Tennessee with that running back and mm-hmm. what Vrabel will probably be willing to do uh, to get him some help on the outside because you know they gave up their you know big receiver AJ Brown. AJ yep. Brown. I don't know what Vrabel's thinking about with that one, but they have something to work with. San Francisco, that's going back home. They have a defense, right? They have the pieces. Debo Samuel and I mean Christian those McCaffrey guys could, now. Uh, Christian McCaffrey. I can see Tom in that situation, but the whole New England situation. We're talking about too many other teams. Even though you know we yeah, would want to see him to, here, but I, I just don't see that he has too many other options. To, they would both have to want to do it for the storybook ending kind of thing. Like you, you I, don't need it, no I, storybook. This it's already written. You know, you I mean, we already got the cliff notes and everything. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, we don't need to come back here to, but to, if he, to, to, to rewrite anything. If he did come back, it would open the oppor- opportunity, open the door for players that would want to come to New England that wouldn't want to come right now. Like we talk about OBJ, who said he only wanted to come to New England if Tom Brady was the. Right. Quarterback. Quarterback. Right. So I think it would open the uh, open the door for mm-hmm. other guys to make the team better around him. All right. Well, I mean, it's it's fun to to dream about, but I don't know that it would ever be. A <laughs> yeah, reality. because whoever else comes in, you got to think about they're going to come in for one year. People want longer term contracts. You know, Tom Brady is uh, year to year, so he's right. going to go to the best situation for him. I don't know if any other big time free agent is going to come in and say, you know what. I'll sign this three- or four-year deal just to play with Tom one year. Yeah. Let me ask you a question about reality. Mm-hmm. How good is Matthew Judon? He the real deal. Now, I, hey, I'm not taking anything away from him, but this week the Indianapolis – Coats are so bad that they hired a uh, a, a non coach. <laughs> so, you know what I mean. He was never coached, and I like Jeff Saturday. We played against him. You know, probably a, a future Hall of Famer. Great, great guy. Probably leadership. But you know, it's bad when you hire somebody who's never coached before because he played on your team. That's like Mr. Kraft. So you know what? You know what, Ty. Hell with Belichick. I want you to coach my team. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, just don't, right. that just don't make sense at all. You know what I mean? But you know, I'm happy for. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Jeff, to get that opportunity. Hopefully he can change it around. But you know what's bad. And, you know, with Judon, he did what he was supposed to do at his mm-hmm. level when you're playing against an office in line like that. I mean, they, let, let's just flat out say they suck. Yeah. It's terrible. Mm. But yeah. He's had a great season besides this game. Oh, like, yeah, no, I'm saying Judon I'm not is... taking anything away from him. I just think he's the best out there. You know yeah. what I mean? And and I know, Greg, you're going to bring it to me, but pay that man. No. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. I ain't trying to be his agent. No, no, no. I ain't doing none of that. No, no. But pay that man. Oh, he's no. gonna want some new money. He's gonna, he gonna absolutely want especially some new money. Especially, so. Especially when no. you see what these edge rushes are getting. But I think the biggest thing you write, Ty, is now let's see what he does in the second half of the season against some of these teams. Which you know, if he keeps this pace up, he's definitely gonna be looking for some new bread. Uh, Ty bringing up his client Stefan Gilmore <laughs> uh, <laughs> reminds me of. The uh, story floating around yesterday that the Colts knew the the Patriots' plays mm-hmm. is that does that mean that they're back to using? I thought it was a new, <laughs> I thought it was a new <laughs> offense, or are they back? Was Gilmore able to tell them everything that they do? I, what, Wiggy, you you two played the game. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Uh, it seemed like Gilmore like was so some of the stuff they must have been running. Gilmore must have known about. They were calling the plays out on yeah. the field. Well, I mean, it's not very hard. Run right, run left. Exactly. <laughs> but, but but you think about it. That's what Coach Belichick did. If if someone 
got the 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 best of him, you know, uh, like Wells Welker or whoever else he brought from another team. He was like, hey, what could you tell us? I mean, that's just what it is. Every other team that I went to, if I'm playing against New England, what could you tell me? You know what I mean? What 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 could I add? Because now I'm playing for the other team. Right. You know what I mean? So I got the opportunity to play uh, against the Patriots. Here comes Tom. He wants to do the same things that I've seen him do all the time. And next thing you know, I'm going the other way. Well, because it, that's just what it is. You're supposed to do that because you're playing with that team now. And the, you give it up. And the give thing, up the information. And the thing I think this would be interesting, obviously, with Ty on, because defensively, you know, it becomes when an offense is very basic, isn't it pretty easy to pick up, okay, what type of runs they like to run and what type of routes they're running? We talk right. about Devontae Parker. You run goals and slant routes. So how difficult could it be based on formation where on the offense side of the football they can disguise things and it's a little bit mm-hmm. – you could have some window dressing, but if your offense is basic, it must be easy to right. pick it up. It, exactly. If you And it all depends on the player. Now, if you have a quarterback like a – Peyton Manning, a, a, a Tom, a Tom Brady, where they see certain things where they can change it up right there, but that those are those guys, you know. But you still look at the tendencies of who you're covering the receiver. He has his tendencies, so he's going to do this in this situation. This is what he is. So if you're studying that as a professional, as you should, you're going to be able to pick up on things. Let's like we always say, you're not going to fool Tom Brady. You're mm-hmm. not going to fool Peyton Manning by your disguise. There's certain defensive players and there's certain things that you're not going to be able to hide either. It's just can you beat the guy on the opposite side of you? It, we've talked a lot. Wiggy talks a lot about how good this defense is. How much of that, if any, is Steve Belichick? Does he deserve any of the credit for that, or is it all Bill? No, I mean, you got to give everyone some credit because Bill can't, as a head coach, can't do it all, do it all himself. But anytime you're talking about the Patriots' defense – and they're doing well, it's always going to go back to Coach Belichick because he's a defensive-minded coach. I mean, he's known for his great defenses ever since he was in uh, New York. you know. But I think you have to give the staff some credit, and you also got to give some credit to the to the, to the sorry ass teams that they was playing too, you know, on the sorry ass <laughs> offenses. So, you know, I mean, let's say let's let's call a spade a spade. Do that against somebody that's worthwhile and good, then that's gonna test who you are as a team. Right. And and the other thing when we, we were talking about this, and I think it'd be good to get Ty's opinion on this, we were talking about the Jalen Ramsey stuff, right? And I had talked about how, mm-hmm. you know, You've been in the locker room before where you're like, God damn, how many stops we need to make before our offense can do something? And I've been on teams before. It's like, Jesus, we just scored. Can you at least get a three and out? When you start to look, and that's why when I look at this football team, and it's probably been like this uh, for the past couple of years, but even now more so than ever, it's like the defense has really, really have to play to another level mm-hmm in order for you to win games because it looks like the offense is so inept. Um, what's that feeling like? Like, Have you ever been in situations yes. like that before? What, what's that like? I mean, it, it, it's frustrating at, at times, especially when you're winded <laughs> and you're tired. You, you, you did your job. And it's like stay, stay on the field a little bit. Uh, stay on the field a little bit longer. But guess what? They probably thinking the same thing when we can't stop anybody. So you have to remember that you know we are a team and we got to support them. But – you can do your job. If you're doing your job, you can get a couple first downs. If we're doing our job, we should be able to get a at some point get a three and out. So you have to be understanding. But in the heat of the moment in the game, when you think that the offense should be doing better, you know how we practice hard all week. I said, you know, it gets to a point. Oh, y'all want to do all that and tear us up? Mm-hmm. You know, on the, <laughs> in practice, you want to make all these first down. Y'all want to do the two minute drill flawlessly. But when we get to the game, you don't do it. So, of course, you get a little bit frustrated uh, defensively, but it's more so because you're exhausted and you're giving it all you got. And sometimes you might not think the offense is on the same page and vice versa. Well, and it scares me with that because Matt Junon, if you look at him last season, after the bye week was when he really fell off, when when his play got a little bit yeah, worse. Yeah, last four games of the and season. And you look at the rest of the Patriots season, they have the second hardest schedule in the league. So – it, how how can this team be good? If you look at this defense, they're the ones saving these games. We saw them fall off at the after the bye week last year, and they have such a hard schedule. I mean, they're, they're opportunistic. That's what I do like about them. And when you're talking about the Patriots, the defense outside of uh, Judon, it's always somebody else coming up with the play, which is a good sign. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. they are young. Um, you know, as long as they play together and you can – stay collectively like that because I don't see anybody that's that type of leader or vocal leader outside of Devin McCourty who has the experience to really warrant saying anything. 
You well, know what I mean? Slater, too. Huh? And, and Matthew Slater, but I'm talking about from a defensive standpoint. Yeah. And Matthew Slater, of course, those two guys, mm-hmm. you know, they're there. They had everything, but are they that type of vocal leaders? When you're talking about Matthew Slater, you know, he's more known as a, a, a premier special teams guy. Right. So, you know, he's more in the offense. He's not going to really come and talk to the defense. That's why I put the, most of the pressure on a guy like Devin McCourty. Devin he has McCourty. to be more, uh, you know, assertive when it comes to his being vocal and everyone needs to look at him because he's been there, he's done that, and you know he 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 one year younger than Tom Brady himself when it comes to football <laughs> no, age. Right. So you yeah. know you got to look to him. And there's a lot of pressure with that. Like there's a lot of pressure, like because you're looking at this defense, right? And and you know, and I and I've been on teams, and we were kind of like this in '01, where you looked and you go, okay, our defense is so good and op- opportunistic that they're going to create something, whether it was you getting an interception, whether it was T-Buck, whether it was Lawyer, whether it was, you know, uh, Seymour, Willie Mack in a strip sack fumble. And now you're like, all right, we have to make sure that we do something here because the defense is doing such a good job. And I feel like this defense this year, because of the way how bad this offense is, has to be so elite. At a, or play at an elite level, and then as an offense, you have to be like, oh, my God. Right. Like, I and know. you also that- have to wait for special teams to block a punt. <laughs> right, right, right. Being there Sunday, just see anything from Mac Jones that changed your mind in any way, shape, or form? No, no, no I haven't. He, I mean, and like I said, I'm rooting for uh, Mac Jones because he was a young guy, but I was expecting to see mm. a little bit bigger leap from, you know, his, his rookie year till now. I think he – Kind of step back a little bit. Well, that's what Wiggy says. He you know regressed. what I mean. So you know he he regressed a little bit, but it happens. You know you know the sophomore slumps mm-hmm. and things like that. So it's going to be re- very telling what he does next year. But when you have somebody right over your shoulder and, and zappy, it's going to be interesting going in the training camp. What happens? How so much? I can see that's why they talk about possibly Tom Brady because no one established yourself. How, how much of that themselves. regression do you think is on him, the player, and how much is on the? change when it came to the offensive coordinator and uh you know the mental f that he got uh by bill belichick i mean i like how much is on him i i would say half of that is on i mean less less than half is on mac in my opinion because when you have somebody that's established like a josh McDonough, you're under him. He's he's teaching you along the way. He's telling you the nuances here and there. Now in your second year, you have to deal with mm-hmm. uh, offensive coordinators by committee. That is going to set you back as a young quarterback. You can't just rely on your athleticism. Like if I had a coach, guess what? I could just rely on I know how to cover. Right. I don't give a damn what you say. I know how to cover. But when you're playing a quarterback position, you have to take more of an upfront mental type position, and you have to be – of not only sound body, you have to be of sound mind and to lead men as that position. So I think you got to put a lot of his regression on the situation and the coaches. And he looks uncomfortable out there. And you look at, like, Christian Fourier took to Twitter yesterday and was like, the Mac continues to look uncomfortable in the pocket line, is getting old really quick. Mm -hmm. Anybody would look uncomfortable, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, Bailey Zappi did not look uncomfortable out there. So that line's not getting old. That's what we're seeing. Right. I mean, like I said, you have to he has to be more aggressive in his studying, uh taking command of the field because you do have Zappy right there. He looks a little bit more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Now, you see when he gets out of the pocket, Matt can run. And no one no one is a, was thought he was that type of athlete to be able to run the ball like he like he is. Like I said, he's known Lamar Jackson, mm-hmm. but he can run the ball. I think he's pretty athletic. Is something mental going on? He's not grasping everything that he needs to be grasping right now, right. in and my opinion. The one thing I look at, and, and you know, I was fortunate enough coming into the league as a rookie. You played on the Parcells. My rookie year, I was with Parcells. And the thing that you start to realize in the league, and especially at that position, I think, you know, the quarterback in the corner position, the mental toughness. And the thing that I look at, it seems like mentally – He's he's in his own head, and you know he just he he looks like that. Like he, men is, is, he, he looks like he's, he's lost he's, some confidence. He has lost confidence because the entire region started screaming for right. Zappy after you saw the kid come into a game 
and and, and you know handle a basic yeah. offense that they dumbed down for him. And then I mean, you talk about he looks more comfortable in the pocket. Did he look comfortable in the second half of that Bears game? No, but he didn't get the prep. When he was throwing the ball to the other team and getting sacked? And we talked about it. Mm -hmm. He had the momentum going into halftime, then lost it in the second half. But imagine what it would have been like if they maybe shared the same amount of snaps during practice that week. Mac Jones has had two touchdown drives on his last 31 possessions. Like, say that out loud. Two touchdowns on 31 (laughs) possessions. And you're out here talking about him like he's Johnny Unitas. Like, <laughs> what are we doing? He's scoring 6% of the well, time. Well, and Ty, it, 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 but, just, but just feel like. They're all t- over me here, Ty. Well, I'm on an Because well, you always go back to I'm that on one an half, island. and it's like, okay, well, what about the two games before that? Who looked more comfortable, right. him or Mac Jones, when he got into that game? I go back to that one half because the body of work from Bailey Zappi is like six halves. But, but f- oh, sorry, right. like, grand total, six halves. But, but Phil- you're throwing out like five of them. <laughs> but Phil and, Phil and Greg. You for- cut donuts in half and have six of them. No, Phil, but I do vote because I get a free donut. <laughs> but Phil and Greg <laughs> for like that. Not in Stowe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no Dunkin' Donuts in Stowe. Phil but. and Greg for that like mental, like if we're able as fans and media people to get in his head, how, fill him in on how difficult you can, it like. His head coach got in his head. But if you can't play for Belichick and the mental games that he might play, I mean, clearly he would have never been able to play for Parcells. You would never be able to play for Parcells. Now, I mean, a- absolutely, because it's totally uh, different. That's what he was, and Parcells was a type to see if he can break you, and if you let him up in your head, you won't be there for long. You know what I mean? He's going to get it out of you that way. Belichick will coach you a little bit more and say you got to look at it from a football perspective. It's all about football. Coach Parcells is going to be from a mental perspective. Are you mentally tough enough to go out there and find a way to win. So I think they're totally different when they come to that, when it comes to coaches. But oh, today's if, you're, if, you're, if you're dealing with this now and you're having a hard time, right. you will never play, to pay, play for Coach Parcells.